citizenship test. Um, well I took it, um, the, the British citizenship test, I took it online and I failed miserably. <laughs> you have to get 70 something percent and I got about 45 so um, it is in itself a wonderful example of British eccentricity. Um, you, you have to uh, basically learn these very bizarre collections of questions and answers in order to pass. You can take this uh, test online. I'm pleased to say that I've, I've actually would have passed it, the one I looked at, but I certainly know that uh, one took that with some trepidation. God save the and the I'm not saying this again. Marv! 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 I'm just not saying this, right? Look right, Alistair. You've just interrupted, right, the British national anthem. You know, if my mum saw you interrupt that national anthem, she'd be really vexed. <laughs> yeah, I'm she would, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. People wishing to come to this country and be here should know about this country because they will enjoy it more and find it easier to live in. Um, whether it should be something like a test I simply don't know. I mean, I think everything should be done to help asylum seekers and refugees feel at home here, and they should be helped to learn English and, and be part of the country, and, which is one of the reasons why I think the fact they're not allowed to work is so appalling, because actually it cuts them off from, from everything that could make them feel more part of this country, as well as letting them feel that they're doing something in return for the hospitality they're getting. English and you don't have a certificate to say you can speak English, you can't become a British citizen. So what do you think of that, Delhi? Well, it's a good idea, really. You know, if you're going to come to the country, I think you should be able to at least be able to communicate. I think on the whole, the British are quite lazy at that. If you go abroad, most people speak English. So, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Which means that you can't speak good, good English, you can't take the test, and if you can't take the test, it affects your right to work. So, do you think people should have good English then, Inda? Yes, I believe it should. Uh, the reason why I say that is because I've worked for such companies as FHM, LastMinute.com. Um, I've worked for uh, some quite high-profile companies. I believe that was due to my level of English. And I think that's extremely important to be able to communicate effectively, clearly, and to be able to get your point across to other people. I don't necessarily think that um, uh, it, it, is, it should be in, a t uh, in the nature of a test. I think citizenship rights, civic rights um, should be known to all by some method of education, either formally or informally. Children in school should be taught, taught about what citizenship is, and I think citizenship is part of the curriculum. Um, there's nothing wrong with having ad adult classes where people are encouraged to go to um, um, learn about citizenship and what it means to be a, to be good citizens. But I have the pro I have a problem with forcing people, you know, saying look, if you don't do this, if you don't learn it, then sorry, you can't stay here. That I have a problem with. has said that Afghanistan is now a safe place, thanks to British intervention. So there's no reason for you to be here. Besides, we have reason to believe that you are funding the Taliban. No, 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 no. After the invasion of 2001, the Northern Alliance took control and began hunting down those who had helped the Taliban. Of which you were one. Absolutely not. 
My family are a prominent Pashtun family. I was arrested by the Northern Alliance and spent eight months in jail. While there, my brother, Aminullah, and my little nephew, Saeed, were murdered. We moved to Pagman after my release. A little while later, we went to Peshawar in Pakistan, and from there, I was smuggled over to Dover. Mr. Toki, the Home Secretary has refused your application for asylum, and you're to be sent back. The rule of law now prevails in Afghanistan. It's a free country now. You must be out of your minds. He was sent back to Afghanistan in September 2004 and was killed in autumn 2005. They shot dead Abdullah Toki at midday in a crowded street in a bazaar. It was a very public execution, a message to show that his killers knew that they would never be brought to account for their crime. His wife still cries every day, but there is nothing that they can do. The Afghan police have done nothing about the murder of Abdullah nor do we expect them to. His wife used to speak to him on the telephone, and at first she said he was full of hope when he arrived in England. He used to say that England was a good place, and that one could live there and start a life again from all the trouble. <laughs> 